welcome to Florida Men on Florida Man with Greg, Wayne, Josh, and Cameron. Mm. The podcast where Floridians discuss the crazy but true stories that always seem to take place in Florida. Florida. What a fantastic week. Thank you guys so much Great for week. listening. Uh, the Disney episode uh, did really, really well. Mm-hmm. Took off. Yeah, it broke a lot of records for us personally, so we really appreciate that. Yep. Um, well, and we learned a lot. That's all I care about. That is that the is learning. the end goal. Yeah. The it's, goal, the goal yeah. is to learn. Wayne's yeah. all about numbers. I just right. want to learn. Yeah, we come in here to learn, but somehow Greg records us uh-huh. and puts us on the internet. <laughs> I just found out about it. Did you? Uh-huh. It's ha- uh, you Googled your name finally. Yep. Finally. It's, it's happened 44 times. Whoa. Jeez. Isn't that crazy? It's weird. Feels How just do like, we sound episode one? Not good. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. I can't listen to it. But you know what? I do uh, need to listen to some headlines. Oh, I have to be there. I've stayed away from the news all day, and mm-hmm. I'm looking at Cameron Sweetly. Mm, let's do it. Okay, so this story came to us from uh, Joanna Banana. Come on. Oh, that was the name that they left in the email. I don't know where they're from. Um, but uh, Banana is a very traditional yeah. uh, Hebrew name. Well, yeah. That is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, hello, Joanna. Thank you for, for writing in. Israel. Thank you. Yes. Israel, yes. If you're listening. <laughs> Shalom, yeah. Joanna Banana. <laughs> um, so a Florida man uh, who, who goes by the name Captain Jack Sparrow. Okay. Okay. Was found wow. dead in oh, the geez. bay uh, last week. Um, so this is actually a super sad story. Uh, yeah. Thanks uh, but a lot, Joanna. I wasn't going to do it, but so many people sent it in. I, know. I mean, has um, Disney heard about this? I figured this? we'd talk about it. I think they wrote the script. What? Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Joshua Hensley is, uh, was a 43-year-old uh, paddleboarder. Okay. That was really well known around the the area, um, Crystal River area, mm-hmm. and um, I guess he was known for dressing up as you know the fictional pirate Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, okay, he only played one character. Yep, when he went out paddleboarding. So unfortunately, uh, he was found um, dead recently. Uh, yeah, so super sad. I mean, apparently he was just a really well loved guy. Um, so you know, it's hard to dislike a paddleboarder. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like, I mean they're real easy going. They thing. really are. Yeah, yeah. especially when dressed just, like a Disney character. Yeah, it's true. He it, it, he looks like him too. Here, I'll show you a picture. Oh, oh crap! So, I like that guy a lot. Yeah, super sad. I you know I didn't want to do it as like a funny one or anything like that. But so many people sent it in that I wanted to to uh, acknowledge. That one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Joanna so, Banana, thank you so much. Did it is for there a cause of death? No. Well, oh. on our website, it does say uh, fake or real name. And mm-hmm. most of the time, people leave their real name and location. But Joanna Banana has chosen to be anonymous. No, I, I think that's a real name. That's yeah, her that's real last name? That's a Hebrew yeah. name. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I missed that part. I just said that. I said okay. Hebrew You're right. Name. I'm sorry. I wasn't mm-hmm. listening. Okay. All right. Next story. Florida woman didn't get enough tomatoes. Okay. Okay. So she uh-huh. chased her grandpa with a knife. Oh, okay. Well, was he Seems making rational. like a tomato salad? Does he, is he handing out tomatoes? <laughs> Oh, Apparently like not treat. enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Katie Jade Gates uh, wanted more tomatoes, mm-hmm. and I guess her grandpa just didn't provide enough for her <laughs> he at, said no. at dinner time. <laughs> what are the big ones called? <laughs> Tom- to- tomatoes. Tomatoes. Tom- yeah, tomato. Yeah, tomatoes. the big ones are tomatoes. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. I got a couple of tomatoes. For right. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's your Jewish accent. Uh, so apparently when she asked for more tomatoes and didn't get any, or she just, I think she just didn't. Oh, is she enough. going to that Rome thing where they throw tomatoes? Maybe. No, and- what she threw was a water bottle. Okay. Uh, at her papa? At her grandmother. Okay. Ooh, yeah, you she, can take a grandma down with a water she bottle. She then moved on to throwing a pack of cigarettes, which the, <laughs> the article says she nailed her 79-year-old grandmother in the eye with. Ouch. Ouch. Those are 305s. So just too. over tomatoes. Uh, and so her grandfather at this time had had enough. Tomatoes. Yeah. No tomatoes for you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so apparently he tried to kick her out of the house. Uh, she didn't like that. So she grabbed a knife and chased grandpa oh out, my out of the God. house down the street. You can't take it to knife level. No. No. I don't know. Well, she, I mean, you shouldn't. 
be throwing cigarettes. At well, your I get that. That part I get. Right for any reason. Not I feel just like because... that's more disrespectful. Than no, pulling Grandma a knife. said, "Throw me them cigs." Right. <laughs> What's her name again? Uh, Katie Gates. I think she needs to go in Greg's shame corner. She one hundred percent needs to go in the shame. No cigarettes. Who, who's in there with her right now? The guy, the banister guy, still. I think from two episodes ago. Yeah. Yep. But well, I think he's moved out. She gets. She gets no cigarettes. No cigarettes. She gets no oh. tomatoes or tomatoes and no, no respect. Those were her no grandma's respect. cigs, bro. I looked it up. Grandma said, toss me them cigs. Toss yeah. me them cigs. Yeah. Get <laughs> out of here. Toss me them cigs. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. You're going in the shame corner. We don't appreciate you in this And the show. knife was just a tomato slice and knife. Right. I've got another uh, person that probably needs to share the shame corner with Katie. No. Okay. Uh, did you guys hear about the Orlando police officer that arrested a six-year-old girl for throwing a tantrum at school? Oh, how bad was this tantrum? My, I think it was a six-year-old tantrum. I mean, it was not a big deal according to no, no. teachers. But a, for some reason, this police officer came to the school, uh-huh. put the girl in handcuffs. Oh my justified. god! Put her in the police car, took her down, fingerprinted her, took mug shots. I mean, Whoa. the whole thing. Absolutely. Was, was this like a yeah. life drama to teach the other kids? Like you be bad, like a scared straight thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, dude. Super crazy. To hell with that cop. I saw that uh, later on Shame this week, corner. they came out and said that he had been fired. Good. The prosecutor's like, well, we're not going to press charges <laughs> against the girl. Well, not yeah, the, I hope not. She didn't do anything, but be six years old. Yeah. I don't know. I've seen a six year old turn into like a Tasmanian devil. Yeah. And yeah, just well, spin around real fast and me- mess up stacks say, of papers. Yeah, but you can't arrest the Tasmanian devil either. You can't. That's, devil either. Yeah, that's a rule. Let's put that cop in the corner. Yeah. yeah. Share the corner. What was his he, name? Uh, cop. Yeah, they don't say. I don't have the story in front of yeah, me. Yeah, cop no. one. Yeah. Yeah. Cop one goes in the corner. Shame uh-huh. cop. Yeah. I feel uh, hooked on those headlines. Those are good headlines. Dennis were Turner headlines. is his name. D- Dennis, Dennis Turner? Yeah. Shame, Shame on him. you, dude. Mm. Shame, Shame on, on you, bro. And anybody named Dennis Turner. Yeah. I don't like him. Uh, yeah, so I feel hooked on those headlines. Actually, we need to ban Dennis Turner from listening. Mm-hmm. Don't even try to listen Get to Get out this. of here, Dennis. Yeah. Shut it off right now. Good job. Hey, guys. Hi. I got I got, a, I got an uh, email this time. Okay. Because no. you guys uh, freed me up on that internet access. I appreciate right. uh-huh. that. Yeah. Now I'm on fark.com. Yep. yep. E-bombs world. Fart? Yep. No, fark. Oh, okay. It's great. Trust me. You'll you'll be there. MySpace. Yeah. So this letter, email, I, I'm stuck saying letter because it's, it's okay. been so long. 44 episodes? Right. Uh, came in and said, guys, you guys are super funny. Thank uh, you. My name's Shasta McNasta. Okay. Mm. Uh, I am also Hebrew. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like it. <laughs> and uh, I want to know uh, your most awkward interaction you've uh, ever had. Like in our life? Yes, in your life. I feel like Shasta McNasta probably has had a lot of awkward Definitely. experiences. And they go, ooh, what is that? And you go, it's Hebrew. Yeah. Duh. I know that people write in because they want to know more about us, which is awesome. And uh-huh. I love that. But I also feel like it's because we give away like... Like so, like little details. Yep. People are just like, we just want to know. Like, we're trying to piece together who you actually are. Yeah, and trying to see mm-hmm. us. Yeah. Clarity wise. So awkward experience. Who wants to go first on that? I don't Ooh. know. Awkward stories. I can't. Cam's got that glisten in his eye. I don't. Come on, but baby. I will. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. All right. Awkward experience. Yeah. Or yes. yeah. Interactions. Yeah. I guess. Interactions. Uh-huh. Um, we know you have them every day. Yeah. yeah. Every Good morning, wife. Day. Yeah. <laughs> You're still here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. She's saying that to you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so awkward. Okay. When I was a senior in high school. Okay. okay a couple of years ago. Yep. Uh-huh. Last year. <laughs> um, so they did homecoming. They did a lot with the whole home homecoming week. Okay. okay. Um, you know, they did the whole voting for homecoming king and queen. Right. Yep. And hang out uh, posters and stupid stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Oof. they did like a top, they did voting and they'd have a top 10 court, homecoming court. Cool. Well, I was one of the top 10. Oh, of come on. He was. Popular boy. He yeah. wasn't even going to say top two because well, he staying humble. I rounded up. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I was one of the, the top 10 for homecoming court. Mm-hmm. Well, part of what our school did was on Saturday, I mean, sorry, Thursday night, mm-hmm. you'd have a parade. 
Okay. Okay. And then Friday you have right. the football game, and Who Saturday a was a dance, like the whole city to celebrate. Okay? But homecoming? it was all about homecoming. Wow. Yeah. So it's really obviously put on by the school. Yep. Right. But like the whole city would kind of take part. Cool. Okay. Nice. So this parade, apparently somebody came up with the idea that all the homecoming court uh-huh. was supposed to be in the, the parade. Oh, you got to sit on a convertible. When I, yeah. When, when I say somebody came up with it, they've been doing it for like yeah, 50, 50 years. years probably. Right. Inception. Yeah. Uh, so I was supposed to sit on the back of a convertible. Oh yeah. With I, that's a red Mustang for sure. A partner, one of the girls that was uh, nominated for homecoming queen. Okay. okay. So it's not like the date you took to homecoming. No, 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 no. Oh, you're not, you're, ele- you're not like, no, that's as the a woman that says you're still here to me every morning. That's what I took to homecoming. <laughs> okay. Come on. Aww. That's cool. Uh, so yeah, basically, I didn't know this girl. Okay. We weren't okay. paired up uh, originally. It by was by height or by looks. No, or by I cuteness. had no. I, I have no idea who she was. So, you, okay, I was told a Ooh, name. Uh, okay, and they're like, okay, you need to get with this person, uh-huh. and y'all will figure out a convertible. Get get a uh, car to ride this on. This is like a blind date. Yeah, exactly. That's right, that's, it's that's, awkward. And so. What did I do? Uh, oh hold God. on. She texted me and she said, Hey, I think I got a car. Do you have anything? Uh huh. I did text her back. No. <laughs> Until? Until, uh, never. You never text her back? No. Nope. Since that day. Yeah. So, shoot, what does she do in the parade? Uh, so I went to the parade. Okay. What? Why would you go? I didn't dress up. Okay. I didn't plan on being in the parade. I no. just watched from the crowd. Okay. So you're watching yep. and 10 and I cars, see, 10 convertibles. I see nine cars come through with a couple. Oh, oh God. No. A girl. no. They <laughs> didn't then, have reserves? And then that uh, tenth filler? Car. <laughs> it's just one it's girl. Just a girl. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Oh, that is bad. Um, what made it worse, though, Okay, was... The you know parades have this natural ebb and an flow. Okay, they go like two miles an hour, and then sometimes they go a little fat. Yep, it stopped. She it her stopped. car stopped right in front of the area. Oh, I was no. I just had to leave. Like, did you see the other cars like coming to a stop? And you're like, there's no way she's going to be right yeah. in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Did she make eye contact with you? She no way. She senses him. I didn't give her a chance to. She probably did, but I just I was going. Yeah, oh, goodness gracious. I'm like, this is just bad news. Did you run and jump on in the car with her? Yeah. At yeah, least yeah. do the right thing? Because yeah. I know you and your heart. You can't yeah. live. I didn't. I didn't do that. You just booked at home. Yep. <laughs> Come on. I can't I can't even remotely top that. Uh, and that's not the end of school, right? You still have to go back no, to No, that's in like October. <laughs> you got like seven you more months. So, many so months. you have to see her in school every wow. day. Uh, yeah. So whenever I was younger, uh, my buddy Justin and I... Um, we were causing trouble. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, his like neighborhood, he, he had this subdivision mm-hmm. um, that had a pretty busy road uh, that kind of went by the subdivision. Nice. And so he and I were bored one night and we went to Walmart Whoa. And um, to buy some water balloons. Mm-hmm. Okay. We were going to cause some trouble. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And probably ID'd you. Right. So while we're there, we see this kid named Todd from church. He's younger than us. Oh. He wants to hang out with us because he's we're, we're absolutely kids, not. You know, you don't hang out with a Todd, no. and you don't hang out with young, young kids. kids. So I'm no. like, hey, don't buy water balloons. These aren't for you. You get out of here. Yeah, you can't even stay up that late, mm-hmm. right? So we go back to Justin's neighborhood, and we're throwing water balloons at cars as they drive by. Okay, this is a fast road, right? And you're like, whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm beaming them. Yeah, so this is legal. Yes. Too. Oh yeah. Well, a yeah. free car wash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My story. So we're th- I'm throwing the water balloons, <laughs> and it hits a car. Boom. Loud, Love it. Right. Yep. Throw another one. Boom. Loud. Love that. Throw sound. another one. Nothing. But then we hear tire squeal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like come to a stop. So you think at first you're like, I whiffed it. Missed I, it. Right. Uh, this is huge redneck truck. Well, like, that's probably standard. Big yeah. redneck truck with like a spotlight on the back. Justin okay. And I, wow. We haul butt back to his house and uh, his parents are out of town. It's just he and I. We're in the living room. Lights yep. are off. And all we see is this truck cruising up and down the subdivision no. with the spotlight. Oh, what? Shining it. Into our window, all oh, around the no. neighborhood. Mm-mm. So we stayed up all night long. It took this truck a couple hours to leave. Yep. Fast forward three days to church. It's it's Sunday. We're in youth group. No. One of the youth leaders walks in, and we're getting ready to start youth group at yep. church. He starts telling the story about he and his brother driving down don't, the road oh, on this truck. Don't say it. And 
it, they have, they have rifles in the back window. Oh god, for hunting. Yeah. Okay, and so the water balloon goes for in, hunting children. Cam probably. knows. Yeah, open carry. Yeah. yeah. So the water balloon went in the window and hit him in the chest, and it and like it Oof. scared him so bad he thought the gun went off. And, oh, plus, and then it's dark outside, so it's wet. Oh my gosh! And so he panicked, and once he realized it was a water balloon, he was furious. <laughs> so he's telling the story, okay, wow. and I'm sweating bullets, thinking, uh-huh. yeah. "Holy crap, it's me!" Freaking Todd. <laughs> Goes oh, Todd. Todd went to church at Todd day. goes to church and goes, I saw Wayne get no. water balloons at Walmart the other night. <laughs> On this exact date? Yeah. So, so I had to confess to everybody in the group that oh, in fact it, it was me. Yeah. I was throwing water yeah. balloons uh-huh. while the whole youth group just looked at me with like shame eyes. Oh my goodness. And then the youth pastor was just like He thought he was dead. What you should have done, it was just you shouldn't you didn't need to fess up. No. Right. All you have to say is raise your hand. Mm-hmm. I have an unspoken prayer request. <laughs> yeah, I know. I want to pray for that kid. No, if, if I I was like 13, okay. I think if I had been a little older, mm-hmm. I would have probably been just been like, no, it wasn't me. Yeah, Todd's yeah. lying. Yep. Yeah. But I was just like, you know, it was me. And yep. at that age in church, you don't know what type of skills those senior level church members have. If they can see the sin. Right. They might look into my heart and know I was lying. Yeah, because out of a congregation, they go, I feel a, I feel a heart. Here. I know. I think it's a heavy probably, heart. It's probably the guns that really made Wayne yeah. uh, fess up there. Yeah. You made a guy think that he was dying. Yeah. yeah I never went back. So mm-hmm. thanks a lot. To church. Yeah. We can tell. Yeah. Thanks. Jeez. <laughs> so how about you, Josh? Uh, I, I hit a woman. Okay. Oh, uh, Jesus. I mean, not like with my fist. Oh, God. Right. Okay. I, You're I, married I, to my sister. I mean, well, she's, she's my wife. It's my, it's my property. You know that. I, know, I know how you feel. So uh, please don't email us about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, I was a teenager, and when you're an adolescent, you just do things with no thought thank at you. all. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you did. Thank you. Uh huh. I no excuse for Cam. Right. Mm-mm. But uh, so uh, I was living in my four story house. Okay. Wow. <laughs> with with the and, maid. And it, with the, of course with you the, were with the clean lady, and uh-huh. on the third floor is uh, my sister's room and my room, both with. Uh, with double pane windows, mm-hmm. okay. argon gas pump between it. This nice is the first inside. time I've ever heard that you even have a sister. I just want to say that. Oh yeah, no, I don't. I've uh, never heard. Yeah, she's really nice. You met her a couple times. I don't, I don't know think why. so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my, our windows are right next to each other because our rooms right next to each other, and they're facing the um, street. Right. And it's a neighborhood. It's yeah. not. It's not gated. Okay. Mm, this sure. one's not. The next one was. <laughs> but uh, so. Uh, I see this old couple walking down the street. Okay. And uh, we're, we're, our bedrooms are on the third floor, but it looks like the second floor because they're staggered. Okay. So uh, it's not all like mansion. It's mm-hmm. a staggered four-story house. Got okay. it. Okay. That makes it better. Yeah. The fourth story is like a loft. I, oh, I see. Cool. For your, for your clean lady to live in. Yeah. <laughs> but it had a balcony that you could look over onto the oh, second floor. <laughs> Jeez. It's a beautiful house. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I see uh, this old couple walking. And of course, I was eating my uh, caramel nips. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I immediately think I can hit, I can hit. The oh, <laughs> but I, I didn't want to get caught, so I closed my window. Right, and I went to my sister's room. Yeah, okay. And by this age, my sister's in high school. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm home alone actually. Yeah. And uh, uh, they, they're getting close, getting to the mailbox, and this is probably uh, 20, 30 yards. Okay. But I got elevation. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. So I I sidearm it. Okay. Because uh, you got to get candy. the angle on them nips. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I sidearm it and then drop to the floor. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I hear, ah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a, I, I must have got her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like a success. Must have got her in like the the pelvis or the uh-huh. old. Uh, sure. So uh, I, uh, I back up. And then I peek my head out. So hopefully I'm far enough back where I'm in the darkness. Yes, you can't see you. And I see her holding her eye. Oh, oh no. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. I promise. I couldn't have hit this eye if <laughs> if I had 50 shots. Right. But I hit on the first one. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Uh, so uh, I, I think, well, I mean, I'm in my sister's room. Her yeah. window's up. My window's closed. Hers is open. So you're yeah. willing to throw your sister under the bus. I'm thinking. Yeah, and everybody knows that your sister has caramel nips. She's always got caramel nips. Right. So uh, I, I I think I'm in the clear. And when I get, uh, my parents get home, um, the house phone starts ringing. Okay. Uh, so a little bit about this neighborhood. When you're a kid, you don't realize things like this. This neighborhood had a directory. Jeez. Okay. Every house in it 
uh, like a was, phone book was listed. Yep, but it was like a spiral bound uh-huh. and like really nice cover, right? Jeez. Uh, embossed with the, the the nice decoration. Oh, yeah. So every house it told the owners and the phone number. Okay. Of the two adults. Yeah. So phone book. Yeah. Phone we book. Get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, how, that's how a phone directory it's works. It's a phone book for rich people. <laughs> a phone yeah. book for rich people. So um, uh, I, I, apparently they called and I, uh, I was busted. He didn't believe that my high school sister, who was not there in the house at the time, <laughs> had thrown her caramel nips out the window yeah, right. and hit a woman. So he drove me down the block. To her house, and I had to apologize. Oh my god! For hitting her in the eye Jeez. with candy. So is that? That's a hard apology to make. That's a. It, it was. is. It was this before or after you burnt the kids' cuisines? Uh, around the same time. Uh-huh. I was a rebellious. Youth. So you had a you had a lot of food related problems. Oh yeah, I wasn't yeah. hiding food though. That no. didn't happen until much later. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, here's the thing. I, at least Cameron's story. I mean, he neglected the poor girl to ride by herself in a in yeah, a that's parade. That's sad. Can't, uh, that's Josh and I funny. were throwing... she's still alone probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's uh, Josh and I were throwing missiles at people. Uh-huh. Yeah. Step yeah. your game up. Which you can go to jail for. <laughs> honestly. Know. Yeah. If a six year old can get arrested for throwing a tantrum. Yeah, I just ignored somebody. You yeah. guys assaulted people. I mean, you should she had a nice corduroy eye patch after that, though. That is well, that's nice. Mm-hmm. It was cute. It was red corduroy. Because <laughs> it was Christmas time. Billy Powell was born in 1804 in Mm. the Mississippi Territory of Alabama. We got this one. Billy Powell. Yeah. 200. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. 14. Yep. Yep. If he was alive, he'd be 214 years old. Congrats, buddy. So Billy's father was William Powell, who was a Scottish fur trader. I could have told you that. And his mother was Polly Coppinger. Okay. An influential Creek Indian woman. That's not a name. Polly is traditional a Creek. It is. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So at this time in American history, um, the Creek Indians were one of five major Indian nations uh, in the Southeast United States. Mm -hmm. So you had the Creeks, you had the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, and the Seminoles. Mm -hmm. Keep singing that song. Yeah. You know it. Let's hear it. (laughs) Uh, The group Billy Powell was born into was the Creek Nation, and they had a... Um, matrilineal kinship system, which wow. meant that Billy was considered to have been born into his mother's clan. So, okay. like, like in today, you yeah. take your father's last name. That's the culture. Back then, it was whoever your mother is. That's who you are. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have to throw that clan gang sign, right? Exactly. Your mother's not your father. Yeah. Well, this worked out um, for Billy uh, because his father was never really around. Okay. And, and so uh, he was a famous fur trader, actually. So he would always come and go. Mm-hmm. So it's basically he was the product of an affair. Um, mm, and so uh, uh, his his mother's tribe was basically all he had. Traveling salesman. Mm, exactly. Always, you know how they are. He's about that fur. Yeah. So the older males in the Creek tribe were responsible for raising Billy and basically training him to be, you know, like a man, you know, like yeah. showing him the ways of mm-hmm. uh, uh, the warrior. And so in 1814, when Billy Powell was 10 years old, the Creek Indians were defeated by the United States forces in Alabama. Oof. And so, like, it was basically this ongoing conflict over land distribution. And so, while the Creek Indians were one of the major tribes, they were massive. Yep. They still were vastly outnumbered by the American army. Naturally, yeah. Um, and so, after the defeat, Billy and his mother fled south to avoid capture. Um, the, tru- the two traveled for months um, with the remnants of the tribe until they Jeez. reached the northern borders of Florida. Did they mm. know they were headed down a peninsula? Right. <laughs> Their options were <laughs> trapped. Uh, the thing is, the conflicts back in this time, um, they were a bit kind of convoluted because on one hand, most of the major tribes are battling the U.S. Army, uh-huh. mm-hmm. right? But on the other hand, they're also battling each other. Oh, so what you so have. That, that was the mistake. I saw Dances with Wolves. There. Right. So you got a bunch of Creek Indians migrating south mm-hmm. um, and showing up to territories belonging to the Seminoles. Oof. And so it was kind of tense. It's right? hard to apologize. Why do people fight so much? Right. Well, no <laughs> yeah, one, why do they fight? I mean, yeah, it doesn't ago. happen anymore. Uh, so there were two factors that play at, that really um, benefited Billy and his people. Uh-huh. One um, was that Creek Indians had been secretly migrating south 
to Florida for about 30 years already. Okay. Whoa. So it, it's a huge tribe. So they were yeah. kind of coming, like trickling down like, south. It's cool. I'm with them. Mm-hmm. They already here. Right. And so the Seminoles, they had kind of already accepted them um, nice. kind of into their nation, into their mm-hmm. culture. And secondly, um, even though the tribes were always kind of at war, uh, there's the whole enemy of my enemy rule. Uh, oh, so yeah. like the Seminoles would rather side with the Creek Indians and have their help against the American forces. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so for sure. Billy Powell and his people, Billy Powell and his people were fully integrated into the seminal society and culture. A jackpot. They were just accepted. I think he's got to go in Bossa Nova. Right. He was, <laughs> he was accepted completely in Florida. Uh, the fascinating part is that Billy like really thrived in seminal culture. Uh-huh. Now he was being raised by some of the best warriors and taught by some of the wisest leaders. So he really had a leg up um, yeah. in life. And uh, he, he ended up way better off than he would have been originally. And this new environment, nice. he was doing really well. Uh, Cam, you don't have to do the the arm chop. Go Knowles, baby. <laughs> Seminole alumni. Every time I say it, he does the he does the arm chop. Once you said Seminole first time, I'm like, why is he moving his arm? I back? know. It took me a while. He's about to start singing. Uh, but because he did so well, um, Billy rose to the ranks very quickly. Um, and the leader of the Seminoles was a chief called uh, Micanopy, which we've mentioned before yeah, on the okay. show. Uh-huh. Um, and so Micanopy actually took Billy under his wing and gave him a brand new Seminole name. Um, his Seminole warrior name was Osceola, uh, oh, which okay. means that the shouter. Familiar. Okay. So okay. Osceola, he's no longer Billy. He's Osceola. Thank yeah, goodness. New, yeah. He's way cooler now. Yeah, yeah. I know. He's which like, is, I was thinking I was going to go with Bill. Right. <laughs> and what's, what's fascinating is Billy is such an Alabama name. Like yeah. it's, yeah. it's kind of like, so now he's Osceola. Can't go um, back to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Right. And so uh, he's incredibly intelligent. He's very brave. And so instantly he begins leading war parties um, against the Spanish who occupy Florida at this point. Man, those history. war parties are wild. There's, yeah, there's so much going on right now. I yeah. know. And I think like it's just kind of one of those things where like we've talked before, the Spanish uh, and the uh, United States, they tossed ownership of Florida back and forth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't want it. Right, was- exactly. So Osceola, he's winning like battle after battle, nice. um, like nonstop. Um, and so uh, he was so skilled in warfare that he became the top military advisor to Chief Micanopy. Mm. Okay, so he, he's running through the you know through the ranks. So for almost ten years, Osceola helped lead the Seminole people um, to peace and prosperity. Um, but in 1821, the United States acquired Florida from Spain. I like okay. that. With all his battles, he led them to peace and prosperity. Yeah, he literally fought so much that it was just like <laughs> everybody was like, "Okay, well, leave who me alone. wants some? I who know who wants some." <laughs> So, um, with the United States controlling Florida again, basically this meant that more European settlers Oof. started moving and encroaching on Seminole territory. Hey guys, you're on my land. Mm. We're right. moving in. So, this led to more military skirmishes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, which Osceola, by the way, was fine with. He was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. That's, he, that's what he does for a living. I'll fight for peace. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, but the other tribal leaders, they weren't happy with it. Like, they, they wanted more peaceful days. And uh-huh. so against Osceola's wishes, the other leaders persuaded Micanopy, the chief, to sign the Treaty of Moultrie, Oof. which basically gave the entire northern portion of Seminole land over to the United States. Nice. So hmm. the U.S. is like, hey, see down those nice Everglades? You'll love them. Right. That's pretty much what happened. <laughs> heard they're beautiful um, these days. <laughs> so for the second time in his life, Osceola found himself moving south again. Oh, mm-hmm. gross. Um, they had no choice, really. And if he wanted to continue to lead his people and advise the chief, he kind of uh-huh. had to do it. And so once you drain that, though, those Everglades could be prime. I know. Beautiful. <laughs> right. Uh, so um, a year after the treaty was signed, Osceola married an African-American woman named Chicota. And over the next eight years, they basically settled in and had four children together. Mm. What's Chakota mean? Uh, it actually means the yeller. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I'm just kidding. I, I get it. Yeah, he's the shouter. He's the shouter. No, I don't yeah. know what it means. Their but kid was the old yeller. Old yeller, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Rest he's basically peace. a family man now. They're having peaceful nice. days yeah. because they've moved south away from conflict. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Wearing Birkenstocks. Right. Mm-hmm. But this entire time, the European settlers were uh, pressuring the U.S. government to fully remove the entire Seminole tribe from Jeez, Florida. that's not good. <laughs> so that they weren't happy with the treaty that gave them this huge chunk of land. They wanted the Seminoles completely gone. Oof, that's tough. And so Americans. most of the Seminole <laughs> leaders, um, they knew that if they stood firm, that that basically meant full-blown war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so without uh, Micanopy or Osceola present, multiple Seminole leaders met with the U.S. government Mm-mm. and hashed out a deal called the Treaty of Payne's Landing. You know, deals, 
are, are not really deals here. Right. Yeah. So what this treaty would do is it would force the Seminoles to give all of their land in Florida to the U.S. government in exchange for lands west of the Mississippi. Okay, so, so we have to go a, through this. A full relocation yeah, what? is what they're saying. No one signed it yet. This yeah. is what they've negotiated okay. with, without Osceola okay. and without Micanopy president. Are you going to help me move? Just right, you're exactly. Make me move. You better be helping me. Three move. states away. <laughs> so the seminal leaders approached Micanopy and Osceola with this deal, and oh. Osceola was like, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, this is an awful idea. Let's go to war. Is that where y'all been for three weeks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so, and, but basically, Micanopy, the chief, who agreed a decade earlier to move further south and yeah. give away land, even he was like, no, like Thank we've, we've given enough. Yeah. We're not going to do Enough's it. enough. Yeah. Right. So all the tribal leaders say, you know what? How about this? Let's go back and let's renegotiate. But this time you guys come with us. Osceola and Micanopa, you come with us okay. and we'll get a better deal. Oh, so they agree to that. But three weeks later, when Osceola shows up to renegotiate, uh-huh. the other leaders, excluding Chief Micanopi, had already signed the original agreement. Oh, no. What, what kind of negotiation is this? Yeah, you already right. signed it. So without Osceola. So basically, uh, they forfeit all the seminal land Jeez. in Florida. Uh, so this is actually a really famous moment in Native American history because Osceola, after being betrayed, he actually took his knife and stabbed it through the treaty and the table it was on. And walked out of the building. Good. So, so you Shouting, can, probably. Right. I'm sure. And it's fascinating because you can actually see that treaty in the National Archives now with the hole in the oh, right. where he stabbed through it. Um, but at this point, Osceola, he sends letters to just about every major member of Florida's government, including United States generals. And he says, I, Osceola, am leading the resistance. Goodness. So this guy's going, love it. let's go. Like, I don't yep. care. I'm for him no matter what happens. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the U.S. trying to avoid another war, basically, because um, this, this takes place after the first Seminole War. Uh-huh. They're trying to avoid a second one. Um, they send an ambassador down to have a chat with Osceola. Oh, mm-hmm. goodness. This guy's name is Wiley Thompson. Mm, he mm. was a sounds, tr- sounds trustworthy. Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing is, Wiley and Osceola become super close. Like, Wiley respects Osceola. Okay. So he comes down here, and it's kind of one of those situations where he's sent to basically prevent a rebellion. Mm-hmm. But when he gets to know Osceola and hears his side of the story, he's like, man, this guy's super cool. Yeah, he's yeah. like, crap, we've been doing y'all wrong yeah. for yeah. a while. So they become legitimate friends. Um, but the European settlers and the U.S. government, they start pressuring Wiley, like, hey, do your job. Like, yeah. be harder on Osceola. Do what we sent you down there, down yeah, you're there to do. You're getting a paycheck every week. Yeah, Wiley. stop going fishing with him every right. week. Right. Yeah. So, one day, when Osceola is going to visit Wiley at Fort King, Wiley has him arrested and thrown in jail. Uh, like a friend move? Uh, no, because he's, he's getting all this pressure from the government. To Traitor. To do his job. Mm. He has Osceola arrested and thrown in jail. And he tells him, the only way I'll let you out is if you sign that Treaty of Payne's Landing. But see, here's the thing. The treaty was already enforced, so he's yeah. just doing it to humiliate him. Oh, wow. He wants his name on that treaty for all of history. Mm-mm. And so, uh, basically, um, Osceola says, I'll tell you what, to secure my release, I'll sign it under one condition. Uh-huh. All of my followers, including my bravest warriors, like my main squad, yep. they need to be here at Fort King present for the signing. Yeah, they got to they gotta see it. Mm-hmm. They got to see it. Uh-huh. So, Wiley goes, that's fine. Oopsie. Right? <laughs> So Wiley, Tom- <laughs> Wiley, Wiley Thompson agrees to this, uh-huh. and Osceola signs the treaty uh, in front of all his people. Okay. The following morning at sunrise, with the rifle that Wiley gave to Osceola as a gift on his birthday, Osceola <laughs> shoots Wiley while he's asleep, point blank range. Oh, that's what I'm talking Jeez. about. In the face. Uh, Osceola's captains uh, then proceed to kill every major officer at Fort King. Oof. They flee into the wilderness, but on the way... They attack multiple U.S. supply lines and murder over another 100 American officers. Okay, I mean, I mean, I don't know who to root for right now. Yeah. Well, okay. here, here, here's the thing. At this point, they're still kind of like the rules of war. For yeah. The most part, like you don't yeah. go after officers. Yeah. Or they're shoot ba- somebody while they're sleeping, probably. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't give his friendship very slip back. Right. Yeah. 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 So they're yeah. going for it. Um. But the but these events launched the Second Seminole War with oh, the United no. States. That was like enough for the U.S. to be like, well, to hell with this. I mean, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. That a hundred, you take out a hundred people. Yeah. Well, so for the next two years, uh, Osceola 
continuously wins like battle after battle after battle. Get him. The guy's like unstoppable. And yeah. they're using um, guerrilla tactics, right? So kind of like hitting fast, running away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the U.S. Army doesn't know what to do about this. Crotch punches, fingers mm-hmm. in the eye. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Osceola is basically winning the war. And so, but then he starts hearing rumors that the United States plans on surrendering and returning all of the original land back to the Seminoles. Okay. Don't believe it. So there's all this talk happening, right? As a gringo in Central Florida, I don't think it worked out. (laughs) (laughs) Spoilers. (laughs) So to add confidence to these rumors, General Joseph Hernandez, who is leading the, he's he's the leading general in Florida at this time. Uh He shows up under the white flag of truce. And he tells Osceola that the United States wants to have a peace talk at Fort Payton near San Augustine. Mm -hmm. Oof. At a fort. Right. I don't know. So Osceola, he's hesitant at first, but basically his people are pressuring him saying, look, like we're tired of war. Uh-huh. And they're, they're like, like it's if, under the white flag. Of truce. That's And that's a yeah. huge deal yeah. under the white flag of truce. So he agrees to go. And on, on October 21st, 1837, when Osceola and 81 of his captains show up at Fort Payton under the same white flag of truce, uh-huh. they are immediately apprehended and beaten and thrown in prison. Okay. Cool. Well, it was so, opposite day. White yeah. flag of yeah. truce. So major betrayal. Um, Osceola's capture uh, by deceit caused a national uproar. Whoa. So people from all over the world, uh, from all different walks of life, are coming to visit him in prison. Wow. Uh, He's like, he's this folklore like legend at this point. Um, But just to put it in perspective, it's estimated um, that his capture was so unpopular uh, that over 70% of the United States Army and its citizens wanted him released. Wow. Wow. Like, like even the European settlers who caused this whole thing were like, eh, it's not cool, man. Yeah, you can't. I mean, there's rules of war. Yep. They're unspoken. Especially back then. Yeah. Like that's uh, the government did terrible things, but the white flag of truce, that's just like one of those international, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. come on. So just out of respect, you don't do it. But no matter how many American politicians lobbied for his release, the government refused to let him go. Mm. And on January 30th, 1838, uh, three months after being captured, Osceola died from complications with malaria in prison. Mm-hmm. I so, wonder how he got that malaria. Right. So malaria the, soup. The, <laughs> yeah. The, exactly. Yep, I knew uh, it. Fed, fed to him by some gringos. <laughs> uh, the following the following day, he was buried um, with full military honors. Um, so it, I mean, in retrospect, it's like okay, well, yeah, that's cool, but still, it's slap in the face. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. you know. Um, but so uh, obviously, Osceola has like quite the legacy, especially locally. I mean, there's Osceola County in Florida. Mm-hmm. There's also one in Iowa and Michigan. What? There's an Os- Osceola uh, city in New York. Um, there's a national forest in Florida called Osceola, mm-hmm. but there's also a mountain range in New Hampshire. I didn't realize uh, oh, named after wow. him as well. Jeez. So you can really go on and on, but this guy, like, basically. Standing up for what he believed in, which was just yeah. So all the tribes heard this news and started I assume, naming, yeah, naming, naming after yeah, him. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. more importantly, cool. Osceola is the name of the FSU mascot. So. There you go. Oh, he's his which highest is, honor. The uh-huh. big thing for Cameron. He's Cameron's. depicted yep. the alumni of football stallion. games every every Saturday. <laughs> but honestly, like he really was an amazing Florida man, and all he all he was really fighting for was just the right to live uh, on his land. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like well, that's what they were all fighting for, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so it, he just, I mean, uh, obviously was very charismatic and an amazing fighter, and uh, did a lot. But uh, just a legendary Florida man. Jeez, yeah, cool guy all around. One mm-hmm. I wish I could be like. Yeah. Well, Cameron's got his face plastered all over as well. Uh, so yeah, I've always said that you're a great shouter, though. I, uh, yeah. He has said that. Yeah, he has said that. Not a good, not a good fighter, but a great, a great uh, shouter. shouter. And I can throw some nips. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he can. <laughs> he definitely can. But it's been a great week. Uh, awesome. And we want to thank you guys again so much for writing in. That means the world to us. And um, thank you for going to fmofm.com. Mm-hmm. And you know what I do when I'm having a bad week? What's that? I go through our reviews. Yeah, so encouraging. Man, they're they're really awesome. And they're no, really creative. Yeah, and I think what's cool is like, you know, you guys send us uh, the headlines and, and all that stuff, but also just the encouraging like letters, oh, yeah. uh, the emails. Like it's it's super super supportive and uh, we love you guys. Yes, we do. Thank you um so much for going to FMOFM podcast on all the social media platforms. Mm-hmm. And thank you again like Josh mentioned for leaving the reviews on iTunes. That really helps a lot. Mm-hmm. It helps people find the show. Um, and we just, we love you guys and we hope you have a fantastic week. Go Knowles, baby. 